In this video, I'm going to explain how to use my content review courses to review the MCAT science material. I often get emails from people asking me uh, how I recommend they use the courses or whether the courses cover all the material uh, or, for example, how the courses are so short. And I think those are very good questions, and I think it would help for me to answer them uh, by explaining why I created the courses in the first place. So I think there are a lot of really good, uh, very comprehensive MCAT resources out there. A couple that I strongly recommend are uh, these types of textbooks, either Kaplan, Princeton Review, or some of the other companies, where they've got a book for every, uh, you know, every subject on the MCAT. I think Khan Academy is another really great resource. I think they've, they've got a lot of really good videos, and they explain stuff really well. And the problem that I had, or the problem that I was noticing that my students were having, was that they were using these, these resources, uh, they were kind of relying on them too much. So what was happening is students would, for example, take a look at these textbooks, and then they would open them up and they would try and read them cover to cover. They would often try to take notes, uh, very detailed notes, or try to outline them, or uh, do annotations. And it takes a long time to do this. Uh, same thing with Khan Academy. Those, those playlists on Khan Academy are really, really long. Um, and so what would happen is my students would, uh, you know, they would start doing content review, and then they would get really bogged down in it. And they would often spend like months reviewing content. Uh, and when I would ask them why they haven't taken a practice test yet, they would say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not ready. Yeah, I have to review this content. And at this point, I would say I've seen this pattern quite a bit, where a student starts by doing some content review. So content review. And then, you know, it takes them a long time. And then what they do is... Uh, once they've finished reviewing something, by the time they've finished reviewing one subject, they'll have forgotten uh, a bunch of other stuff. So they, they forget stuff, and then when they go to do a practice test, uh, they realize, oh, I've forgotten you know, a lot of this uh, material for like biochemistry. Let's say I'm doing bio, I've forgotten biochemistry. Okay, so now I have to go back and do content review. Uh, and they end up in this kind of a loop where they do content review, then they forget it, and then they do content review and they forget it. And the reason is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to treat the MCAT like uh, like a normal class. They're trying to treat it like a normal pre-med or normal undergraduate course. And that's really not what the MCAT is. And you really can't study for the MCAT the same way that you would study for a regular class because there's just so much material and there's so much breadth to it. So what I mean is like a normal class maybe um, looks like this, right? It's like a it's like a glass of water, right? There's quite a bit. Uh, and so when you dig deeply, uh, you study and you learn more uh, and then you're good. And so if you study... You want to learn a small number of subjects, uh, whatever the course is about, in a lot of detail. The MCAT is not like that. The MCAT is much shallower. The MCAT is like a sort of a shallow puddle. And if you try to dig too deeply in any one section, uh, then you're going to end up either running out of time or spending too much time. Uh, and that's really not the right approach to take. It's not you, you don't want to approach the MCAT like you would approach uh, a regular class where you're expected to learn everything, where you're expected to take really detailed notes and things like that. And so that was the purpose of my science review courses. The purpose really was to give students uh, a method to jump really quickly into content review. So for example, this biology course, right? I have one lecture or two lectures, we can say, on plasma membranes, right? Now, these are not very long lectures. This one is 23, about 23 minutes. This one is about only about 14 minutes. And my goal with this course is that you'll breeze through it really quickly. So uh, for example, the the, the times that I have here, the estimates that I have here, uh, they include uh, practice questions, but they also include, uh, they assume that you're watching this on normal speed. So if, for example, you watched it on 1.5 or 2x speed, uh, you could finish the course quite, quite a bit faster, I would say. And really the purpose of these, uh, these courses is to review maybe 90 or 95% of the content for the MCAT. And the reason why that works, of course, is that the MCAT has a very small number of very low yield material that is very unlikely to be tested. Not that you shouldn't review it, but uh, it shouldn't be your priority. So your priority should be to review the high yield material, which I cover in my courses. And then you can jump, you can then once you do that, you can jump into uh, practice tests. And when you're doing practice tests and practice questions, that gives you a much better uh, idea or a much better indication of where some of your weak points are. But of course, it's rather difficult to jump directly into practice tests or practice questions. Some tutors do actually recommend that. They recommend their students not do any initial content review at all. They recommend that, the, that their students jump directly into practice questions. Um, I think that that's, other than for students who are, um, for example, very successful pre-meds who like, are just coming off uh, all their classes and there's, you know, they're, everything is super fresh in their memory, I don't think that that strategy works. I think you need some initial content review. And that was really the gap that I designed my courses to fill. Uh, they're designed for you to go through them as quickly as possible. 
Uh, each lecture is sort of like a bite-sized thing. So the, there's a lecture, there are practice questions. And I really tried to sort of, uh, we could say like gamify it. I really tried to make it like, uh, oh, you finished this lesson. Okay, move on to this one. And there's sort of an inertia or a momentum that develops where you can kind of get through these lessons pretty quickly. Uh, and you can do the practice questions just to make sure that you understood what was discussed in the lesson. And again, the courses are designed for you to get through them collectively, all the science content, I would say in maybe two weeks. And two weeks, I would say is a kind of a, a higher end estimate. So it should take you less than two weeks. And with these lessons, I don't want you getting bogged down in, uh, in the nitty gritty, in like the, the really uh, detailed stuff. Uh, in some of the lessons, when, when there is stuff that you do have to memorize, for example, biochemistry, when I get to amino acids, uh, I just outright say, oh, you have to memorize these. And, and this is very high yield and you, you need to memorize this. But in general, I try to avoid having students get bogged down in the weeds because I want them to jump into practice tests and practice questions. Because I really think that practice tests and practice questions are where you really learn. And, and you, can, you can keep doing content review as you're doing practice tests and practice questions. And this is where, for example, the Kaplan textbook or the Khan Academy videos might come in handy. So getting back to this screen, let's say that you, uh, you are doing a practice double AMC test, right? And you just finished the practice test. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to review your questions, the questions that you got wrong or the questions that you guessed on, and you want to open up the textbooks. Uh, at that point, you can use these types of more comprehensive resources like the textbooks or, uh, or Khan Academy to review specific material that you know that you're weak on. So for example, let's say, so for example, let's say you miss a question that's uh, a super detailed question about, about different phospholipids, for example. Now that's a relatively low yield thing. So at that point, that's a, good, that's a good thing to look up in one of these textbooks. You open up these textbooks or you go to Khan Academy or you go to one of these types of really comprehensive resources and you go in and you read that particular section and you make sure that you understand the particular section, right? So you missed a specific question. Well, you want to read a more general section, maybe like a couple of pages. And at that point, that's the type of thing that you can take notes on or outline or uh, annotate. That's something that's actually that's feasible. It's not feasible to do that for these whole textbooks. These textbooks are going to take you way too long to do that, but it is feasible to do it uh, in small sections. So as I said, I think these textbooks or Khan Academy should be treated as references. They should be treated as things where you open them up and you look up the thing that you got wrong and you read a couple pages here and there. They should not be read cover to cover. I don't think the Khan Academy playlist should be watched uh, from beginning to end. I don't think that's the most productive use of your time. And as I said before, I've seen a lot of students get bogged down in uh, the, the kind of content review. And I think partly it makes you feel like you're accomplishing stuff when you're going through the book, but it's not a very productive use of your time. Uh, so again, I don't recommend that. And that was the purpose of my courses was to really fill that kind of niche. So I would have my students uh, do my courses as quickly as they can and then jump into practice questions. And so the courses don't cover everything. They don't cover 100% of what could possibly ever be tested on the MCAT, but they do cover the highest yield, say 90 or 95% of the material. And the assumption is that you're gonna supplement them with the kinds of reference materials that I talked about. And so if you have any questions about that, if you have any uh, additional questions about how exactly you should use these courses, shoot me an email and I'm happy to help. But hopefully this video answered some general concerns or some general questions about how to do content review for the MCAT. And thank you for watching.